Hi folks, welcome back. If you watched last week's video, you know that we built some MDF terrain. Specifically, we built the upper rank shop blocks from the Gangs of Rome line by Sarissa Precision, which is going to be perfect for my fantasy Roman campaign. However, we also talked about how with MDF terrain, if you want it to look good on the table, you need to put in a little extra work. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to dig into how to fix these kits, how to add texture, how to fix those flat roof tiles, and how to make them look great when you get them out. There are actually a lot of ways of doing this. I'm going to go over the ones that I find work best for me and that I have materials for, but I will mention a few of the others, go into a little bit of detail, so that all of you, if you go down this route, can hopefully use what you've already got to detail up these kits and to make them look good. All right, let's get started. The first thing I want to fix is those flat wall panels. With no texture, they won't be fun to paint. For that, I'm going to use Galleria Sand Texture Gel. Now there are a few other options here, but I find this to be the easiest, cheapest, and most efficient way. You can spread it on with an old brush, pick up a cheap trowel, or just get in there with your hands, which is what I usually end up doing. The downside of this process is that you lose those baked in lines and cracks in the walls. But if you really love those, it won't be hard to replicate them. And personally, I think the trade is well worth it. On top of that, using such a thick product lets me hide the joints where the kit went together. I just smeared on extra thick there to cover up the gaps. I try to be careful not to apply it to the door and window frames and to the pillars. If you don't have this texture gel and don't think it's worth your money to pick up, another way to do it is with grout. I'm not using that here, but if you want to see the process, I do something very similar in my roadside shrine video. The link will be in the description below. Another benefit to using the sand texture gel as your first layer is that it completely covers the MDF, which will be a huge benefit when priming. MDF can be incredibly thirsty. the internet for a little bit. Go. Go touch grass before you Google something that we're all going to regret, okay? What I actually mean, of course, is that MDF will drink up a lot of paint if you let it, and the paste prevents that. It does need to dry overnight, however, so while that happens, we can move on to the first step of fixing the flat roof panels. This is corrugated paper. You may have seen it used before to mimic corrugated metal. Today, I'm using it as roof tiles. I use a paper cutter to cut it into one inch strips. You could do this just as well with scissors and a ruler though, if you don't have a paper cutter. Once I've cut the strips, I use Eileen's tacky glue to place them in place on the roof panel. I purposefully overhang them on the sides to make sure the edges are covered, and then, because it's just paper, it's very easy to trim up the excess after. I layer the strips over top of each other in rows to try to simulate the look of Mediterranean roof tiles. Once they're all done and trimmed, it ends up looking something like this. Okay guys, we're on day two. I left everything to dry overnight. Now I'm going to be using a technique called spot spraying to prime the model. That is to say I have four similar colored spray paints and I'm just going to take them and spray them in spots over the entire model so the colors naturally blend together. Now that's just going to be our base coat as well as the prime. So you want colors that are pretty similar to each other. You can use this for any type of building though. For this I'm using pretty light colors because it was Roman concrete and that's a great base for that. But if you were painting, say, a European castle, you might want three or four shades of grey to spray in spots as your base and your prime. Or if you were doing a modern brownstone, like say for a modern game or for the crisis protocol, then you might use browns and reds mixed together to get your face coat. For the spot spray, I use four rattle cans that I just have the dregs left of. A can of white scar, some wraith bone, a grey primer, and a beige primer. Ultimately, that leaves the MDF kit looking like this. It's a good first step to making those new textures really pop. 
To add some variety to the base coats, I take four craft paints and just kind of randomly mix them and dry brush them over things or stipple them on any place that didn't have total coverage, or just where I'd like to see some more interesting tones. After that, it's time to add a bit of decoration to the building. I use a ruler and pencil to mark off a line around the entire structure. I use this as a guideline to freehand in a colored stripe around the bottom of the building. Now, I don't know what the technical name for it is, but it's a common decoration on the sets of movies and TV shows about Rome, so whether or not it's accurate, it's still going to help evoke the right images and fantasies in my players' heads. For the wooden parts, I use snakebite leather contrast paint. You can do this with craft paint if you want to, but for these tiny details, I really prefer a high pigment paint so that I only have to do one layer. A contrast or speed paint is perfect for this. This particular building has a lot of wooden details, so I just stream a show and get down to the work of it. After that, it's time for some dry brushing. I take Drake Tooth from Army Painter and just dry brush over everything. The walls, the door and window frames, the balcony, it, it all gets a coat. With that done, I move on to the roof. I used a cheap copper craft paint for this and it was a mistake. Not because it doesn't end up working, but because it is very thin. It took a lot of coats to cover up that neon green. I would absolutely recommend a high pigment miniature paint here if that's an option for you. But given enough time and enough coats, it does work. With everything base coated, that means it's time for our wash. I'm using a mix of black and brown oil paints and doing a really thin oil wash. It has to be a really thin wash on colors this light, or you run the risk of overwhelming them and just turning the whole building grey by getting rid of your midtones. And again, this goes over every inch of the project, including the roof this time. And once again, we're at a step where I'm going to have to leave everything to dry for a few hours. Once the oil wash is dry, it's time to add a little more character to the roof. I take a couple of brown craft paints and just kind of stipple them on with an old brush in some random places on the roof, making it look older and beat up like grime has had time to accumulate. I also decided to add some more color with a purple stripe across the balcony. This was just done quickly with Hive Dweller Purple Speed Paint. So this is the point where I would normally recommend stopping and putting in weathering effects. For many of you that's going to mean moss and algae, live plant material that maybe is growing up the side of the building, but my campaign takes place in sort of a coastal scrubland area, which means um, a lot of dead grasses, a lot of dry grass, a lot of sand, not a lot of greenery. It also starts during the middle of a drought, but that's pretty unique to my campaign. So as a result, I'm going to be applying a lot of pigment powders and some dead foliage and things like that. But you might want to take a different route decorating your own building. If you want to see how that might go, I did something similar in my Christmas church conversion video. I'll link to that in the description if you want to see what I did there. So now it's the fun part, weathering. For the first step, I use some verdigris effect paint on the roof. I brush it on pretty liberally and then just kind of smudge it off with my fingers whenever I think it doesn't look right. This helps to add to the liveliness and color of the building. And though I won't be using a lot of greenery and live plants, the area wasn't always in a drought. So it makes sense that some foliage or vines had grown on the roof and has since died off and been left to rot. Next up, some dry looking grass tufts. I like to use super glue and just place a couple of these around the base at corners, 
spots where it could be that the stone is cracked and grass or weeds have grown up through it. Then I place down some tacky glue in areas that seems like the wind might have blown dirt and debris and just sprinkle a little bit of small aggregate pieces over top of it. And of course I do this over a paper so that there's no waste from it. And finally to finish things off, a very light deserty pigment powder. I love working with pigments for bringing detail to things. So I just grab a crappy old brush and start spreading it on. Into the corners and cracks, accumulated against surfaces, and even across the bottom part of the building walls. To me, this really helps sell the look of being in a dry, desert city. In fact, these details that I put on in the weathering step are the real difference makers. The things that make this building pop and look lived in and like it has its own story to tell. Alright folks, so that pretty much makes it time for my final thoughts and wrap up on this project. But first, I just want to say if you could all hit like, it does help the channel immensely. And if you've come this far in the video, you probably like the video and you might like to see more. So please hit subscribe if you're interested. There's always more content on the way. Which brings me to the next thing I wanted to cover actually. It's a minor channel update. I'm going to be changing my workflow and the way I do things here at Dungeons & Dry Brushing, and that means you're actually going to be getting more videos faster and hopefully higher quality as well. But part of the sacrifice to make that happen is going to be regular Wednesday uploads. I can no longer promise that there will be a video in the middle of the week every week, but some weeks might have two videos or more or bigger projects in the videos because of the change in workload. So we're going to try that and see how it works out. Now let's talk about the project. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I think it looks great. It's going to be a fantastic piece of terrain to put on the table with all my other Roman fantasy stuff. It's really those last few steps, just like with a paint job on a miniature, you know, the final details are what really bring it together and make it pop. In this, it's the weathering steps, putting on the weathering powders, the grime, the little bits of plant matter, the tufts, that's what really lifted up to the next stage. In the end, this is a piece of scenery that I'm really happy with. I'll be happy to put it on the table. And I think that for the price range, especially if you're willing to put the work into fixing it up, it's hard to beat MDF terrain. All right, folks, thank you for watching. If you haven't hit like, hit like. If you're not subscribed, please do. And I will see you on the next one.